If you didn't know otherwise, you swear I'm run committing. This looks like a run commit, the way that we're getting penetration, the way that we're shooting through, and the way that we're stuffing this. But you can see based off the cornerback is out there manned up with that receiver that's not a run commit. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Nope, nope, nope. I shot him down. Nope. I shot him down. Shot him down. Nope. I shot him down. Shot him down. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a defensive video for you guys today. Today, I'm be going over a run-first defense. This is one of my favorite go-to defenses when it comes to stopping the run, uh, as I'm sure you guys saw in the gameplay footage earlier in the video. This is going to be my number one run defense. Anytime somebody's going to run the football, I put this defense out there, and it's usually pretty shut down. I would say this is my go-to on anything inside the five, uh, pretty much any run-heavy situation, any fourth and, you know, fourth and short, anything like that. I'm going right to this defense and it usually works just about every single time. Now, the formation I'm going to be in is the 3-4 odd. I'm in the uh, Miami Dolphins slash New York Giants defensive ebook that I put out earlier in the year. Links in the description below if you guys want to check that out. But the play that you can use for this is really two different plays, uh, and they're really very situational. There's the cover four quarters, which I can do this setup out of, and then there's the cover four drop show too. So I have both these plays in my audibles. They're going to react pretty similar to the run. The setup's going to be pretty much the same, but I'm going to have them in both my audibles because I do use them in different situations other than that since we have the option to go to coaching adjustments uh, in practice mode now I would say you want to make sure you set your flats to zero for run defense that's very important you can leave your curl flats to default uh, but ultimately zone flats to zero will be very helpful when it comes to stopping outside runs other than that let's go and let's pick the regular cover four and then on the defensive side we're just going to go we're just going to go random run so i have no idea uh where the ball's going now as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at aos.com if you guys want to get your mud team up and support this channel at the same time all you have to do is check them out link in the description below and use discount code money to get three percent off what's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market now the reason that i'm in cover four and i've shown this in a lot of different videos anytime somebody asks me how to stop the run my first response is make sure you're running cover Number four and don't guess pass. This is something I'm just going to show you guys. Before I show you guys the setup, I'm just going to show you guys why cover four is such a successful run defense if you don't know. Now, essentially, if you guess pass, this will uh, well, this won't work. But ultimately, uh, when it comes to cover four, these safeties will essentially play the run kind of like a um, kind of like a nine man uh, run commit. The cornerbacks won't. The cornerbacks will drop back if there's a receiver in the area. But the safeties will basically run commit every single time as long as you don't guess pass. So basically, I, without doing any setup, I'm just going to show you guys how the safeties react. Uh, as you can see right there, the safety makes the first tackle about two yards in. This is something you'll only see in cover four. So just to show you guys what I'm talking about, when this play starts, the cornerback will immediately drop back, but every other position shoots forward. If you look here, it's basically like a run commit. Both cornerbacks on both sides dropping back. All the safeties, all the linebackers, they all play the run first. They all play to their, to their gaps, to their run fits. And you can see this is why this is going to be the most successful opportunity you have to stop the run. Now, I will show you guys what happens because we saw how they, they ran commit, um, you know, basically with if I don't press anything. But if I hit guess pass, which a lot of people do on like every single play, you're going to see we're going to lose that ability. You're going to see the safeties will drop back and now, you know, we're basically giving up run space. So I don't know if you're watching the safeties, but we'll go, to, we'll go to the replay to show you guys. This is something that's completely in my control. As you can see right here, like I said, the cornerbacks always drop back anyway, but if you guess pass, the safeties drop back too, which completely defeats the purpose of this play. So guessing pass will basically make this a regular defense and it won't be that great against the run. So now that we know this about cover four, and like I said, no other defense in the game is like that, we really have two different options. What is the difference between these two really? Uh, cover four drop show two basically plays in a way that lets nothing get behind them really. That's something that, I mean, you can home run cover four 
before, but it's a lot less common and a lot less people know how to do it. When it comes to cover for quarters, this is something that's much more susceptible to uh, one play touchdowns because it's not a very good deep coverage when it comes to, um, you know, it's very easy to glitch. So that's why when I say I use these situationally, this would pretty much be if I still have to cover the entire field in, in like a pass play. If I'm, if I'm at the 50 like I am here, I'm going to go with this particular play because I don't want to give up broken plays that end up being one play touchdowns. But when it comes to something like the cover for quarters, it's much better in somewhere like the red zone because there is no deep passing. So if I run your basic cover for drop show two where it's basically designed to not let anything get behind it, there's nowhere to go here. There is no behind it. So I'd rather go with something like cover for quarters inside the five, inside the 10, because at least this has man matching principles where essentially these guys will follow and they'll you know chase things in front of them rather than just basically being of the mindset of not letting anything get behind them when there's nothing behind them in the first place. So when it comes to the setup, the setup on both these plays is going to be the exact same. Uh, I'm going to basically do the exact same thing every single time, whether I run the cover for quarters or whether I run the cover for drop. I'm going to base align, show blitz, base align. To bring up those coverage adjustments, by the way, just hit Y or triangle, whether you're on Xbox or PlayStation. To base align, you're going to hit right on the left stick, then left on the left stick, then right on the left stick again. The reason for that is simple. You can see how when I do the base align setup like that twice, now the safeties are right in the box, which is what I want. I want them to be down the box, not the corners. The cornerbacks, if they're down over their receiver in a pressing manner, they essentially, if your opponent puts them on a streak, if they beat the press, they're going to be giving up one play touchdowns. That's why you typically don't want your cornerbacks down in the box, but you want your safeties down in the box because the safeties are the run commit guys anyway. They're the guys that are going to make this play work. Other than that, I just want to make sure that I put my uh, my zone drops to underneath because now, since we set these to zero yards, these guys will do a really good job of basically just playing down and cutting off outside run lanes, which essentially is going to be the plan. You could also, if you want to, take away any inside run lanes simply by uh, pinching your entire defense. Now, this will bring the cornerbacks back down but if you're on like a fourth and inches or a fourth and one or something like that and you know your opponent's probably going to run this is a perfect opportunity to give that pinch so basically hit the r1 or r uh, or the uh, the rb right bumper and down on the left stick and now you'll see how there's really no run lanes up the middle when it comes to uh, this particular defense like i said it really pinches his defense and this is pretty much it like i said i don't have to do anything else do not guess past. That's probably the most important thing. If you guess past, those safeties will drop back. I also like to blitz my user. Uh, this is basically so I don't get weak boxed because if you don't have four guys blitzing, a lot of times you might get bowled over even in a 4-3 or a 3-4 defense like this. And you can see there really are no run lanes. The safeties, once again, make the play. So I'm going to do that one more time. Like I said, I like pinching a lot of times. It's a, if it's a formation like this, a lot of times this guy will be out on the receiver. Um, I like to move him back in manually. It's, it's really the only way to do it. Uh, if you move him back in manually, um, you know, he'll still get out. If it's like a, if it's a pass to the flats, the hard flat will still get out there. So we'll go and do this one more time. Like I said, you can shoot gaps on this sometimes too, even though it's not really like the most successful. But you can see the safeties just fly in there and make the play every time. This is not something. I don't have to be a great run defender. I do prefer the pinched setup, especially against something like this. Two tight ends, fullback. Just got to walk this guy back so he doesn't get burned off the line. That's all you really got to do. And now we have a, you know, no matter what run play this is, this is going to get shut down. I don't even really have to do anything. I mean, the safeties are going to do it for me. Uh, I typically try to play back. I'm going to guess this is an outside run, although it wasn't. You can see there's nothing there. Like I said, if this is a fourth and goal or something, they're not going to get it. So that's it. That's the vid. If you guys want to see more videos like this, more defensive videos, make sure to hit the like button as always or let me know in the comment section. And make sure to be a subscriber so you guys catch them when I drop them. Other than that, thanks for watching Mad Money Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.